Hey everyone, I've got a great lesson for you today. If you've got a one-handed backhand or actually even a two-handed backhand, I'm gonna show you a way to move the ball that, to be quite honest with you, I haven't seen any other coaches demonstrate before. And I know that there are pros doing it on the tour because I studied the film. So I actually never had a coach tell me how to do this. I started noticing this type of movement that was either natural or taught to these top pros. And I think it's the best way to move to the backhand. Now, there are certain players that when they move, they actually cross over on their first step. So after they come out of their split, you're gonna see them turn and take a big step across. And that is an option, especially when the ball is out wide. The ball is out here. But what I'm gonna show you is what we call our shuffle move. With the backhand, it's shuffle step hit. It's not a true shuffle, and this is what I'm gonna break down for you today. But if you can start to shadow stroke this movement and weave it into your backhand side, especially your one-hander, it's gonna make a tremendous difference in your backhand. Federer has made, obviously, millions of dollars and won many Grand Slams. One of the reasons is because of this specific footwork pattern. In fact, when he, when he has a, a, a wide ball in his one-hander, you don't see him turn and take 20 steps over to the ball. And I've seen a lot of coaches talk about, you know, you got to turn and run and take little steps, but he is able to actually cover the entire half of the court with one big shuffle and then a step. And you can see how much ground I just covered. I'll do that one more time and then I'm going to actually break the move down for you. The, basically, he's going to step out, but he can take a big shuffle like this, step in and rip the ball. I've seen him hit passing shots Balls are coming 80, 90 miles an hour, and he actually does a quick shuffle like that, even on fastballs. So this is not something where, oh, you have a lot of time, you can do it. You can do it on fastballs too. And so we are training players to move this way. Now there's a number of benefits to this movement. First of all, when you move this way, and I talk to my students about this all the time, when you move this way, your shoulders are facing the net longer. And what I feel this does, is it helps you to track the ball better. We talk about stalking the ball on the forehand. For me, this is stalking the ball with your feet because you're tracking the ball and you're reading it to see what your next move needs to be. If you turn sideways, if you turn sideways right away, it's kind of hard to find where you need to be sometimes. So I just find it's, it's almost like a, another analogy I could use as a goalie. You know, when you're playing goalie, you don't turn sideways to get, to get the ball. You try to keep your shoulders square until the last minute, and then you make your move. It's the same thing here. You want to keep your shoulders square, and then you'll get that nice shoulder turn as you step into the ball. So the shoulder turn and the turning of the body will happen much later in the motion. Another reason why I like this is that when you shuffle, look at my eyes, both eyes can track the ball. Just like your body, your eyes can track the ball. As soon as I turn sideways, I lose the vision of one of my eyes, so I think it makes it hard to perceive or pick up the ball. So obviously there's a number of benefits to this. Now, what I want to do is I want to break down the movement, and then when I'm done with that, I'm going to do a demonstration, and then we'll wrap up this lesson. But this is a very, very powerful lesson. Please take note of this. Please go study this. Notice I'm not hitting a ball right now. I'm just kind of shadowing the movement. This is the place that I would start. So this is how it works. Notice how I'm not standing directly in the middle.